Well, hello there. Happy Friday to you. I hope you had a great week and a good Friday. And uh, we're here once again. I'm going to do a live uh, paint pouring demo. And uh, I think today I'm going to try a um, split cup technique. Um, split cup is very, it's a very fun technique. And uh, it's a lot like the kiss pour, or as I call it, the double cup ring pour. I'll kind of explain a little bit about that as we go along here. But the um, split cup is kind of an easier way to achieve a very similar uh, result. So um, the painting behind me is actually a, that's a double cup ring pour. Novala, hello, happy Friday to you. Um, I was just pointing out the painting behind me. That's kind of what we're going to be doing today. It's, uh, we're going to be doing a split cup technique. Hey, JC, thanks for uh, joining us. And um, so I mixed up some paints. Um, it's kind of been a frantic Friday. I've been running around and doing a lot of errands and things. So um, it's nice to kind of relax a little bit, make some paint and do a painting and chat with you. And uh, um, it should be a whole lot of fun. So I hope you have a, um, a great weekend lined up. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of painting, I think. It's going to be a busy weekend for me. Um, but uh, let's talk about today's technique and paints. And uh, first of all, let me show you what a split cup is. I'll show you the type that I like to use. Uh, this is the one I'll be using today. <clears throat> this is a 14 ounce. Um, it's like a shaker cup or it's got a lid that came with it. Uh, but it's got a divider down the center. They, they, it's like a workout shake cup. Um, there are a few varieties of these, but this is the best thing that I found as far as a split cup goes. It's really durable. You can use it over and over again. Um, and I have a few different sizes. So this one is a great one. Um, it's 14 ounces. So that's a good like middle size kind of cup. And uh, we got, hey, Dawn, thanks for joining us. Um, and here's a very small uh, split cup. This is also, um, it's got divider right down the center. This is like a dessert cup. Um, it's, uh, I found th these come in packs, but, um, I have not seen them. I got this on Amazon, of course, like most things, but I have not seen them available for a long time. So I'm not sure what the deal is with these, but these are a nice size for smaller eight by 10 paintings, 11 by 14 size paintings. Um, so this is a kind of a fun cup. Um, we got a big one here. This is the first split cup I got. It's like this, uh, I don't know what they call this, a him and hers cup. It's not the my favorite one though. Um, it's got a divider down the center. I think this is a 20 ounce cup. So it's for rather large paintings. Of course, you don't have to fill it up all the way. Um, but the divider has got like this little split right here. If you can see, it's hard to see on the camera maybe, but the, the divider doesn't come out all the way up flush with the very top rim here. This one is my favorite one. The divider comes all the way to the top of the rim. It's an awesome cup. Um, this one works just fine. It's not my favorite though. That little rim there, uh, that little separation allows for the paint to kind of blend together a little bit more before it hits the canvas, which for me is not like perfect. It's not ideal, but it works fine. And here's a great big one. This is a, I think a 30 ounce, um, it's a 30 ounce cup. You can put, so you can put 15 ounces on each side. And again, it's got the big divider in the center. Uh, this is a nice one too. It's a great big one for big paintings. Um, and this is called Hydra cup. Uh, these are a little tricky to find on Amazon. I created a page on my Amazon, uh, page, uh, called, uh, paint pouring gadgets, I think is what I named it. And I put some different um, split cups on there if you want to check them out, different sizes. Um, this one, this exact one in this exact color, I couldn't find, but there's like a blue one on there, I think. Um, so these work great. I really like just one, uh, when I talk about split cup, I really only like um, two sides, like with one divider. Uh, I know a lot of people have made split cups, like custom made split cups that have like multiple uh, openings and multiple compartments. I don't really love those um, because it gets, it's too much for me anyway. I like just two sides where you can really 
have contrasting colors. To me, that's the whole point of doing a split cup painting is to have uh, like really contrasting, like really darks or really lights on each side or like blues on one side, reds on another side, let's say. Um, so you can get a lot of different contrast, either with color or with value. So for me, just the, the one split cup is the best. And that's what I like the best anyway. Um, so let's see if we got any questions. If you have any questions throughout our little demo, throw them in the, up in the comments and I'll be happy to uh, check them out. And JC says, um, she's been looking everywhere for split cups. They are tricky to find. Um, and these things kind of like this size in particular sells out a lot. Um, this is about, I think, $13 or something, but you can use it over and over again. Um, just make sure you like rinse it out or wipe it out um, after you've painted with it. I wouldn't let the paint dry in these because it can be very, very difficult to go dig the paint out. So once you're done painting, I really suggest cleaning these out. So have a bucket of water. Try to wipe as much as you can out of the cup, then submerge it in your bucket of water and really kind of rinse these out to keep them clean as uh, the longest um, for so you can use them over and over again. They're too deep to really get your hand in there to like pull dry paint out. So I like to clean these uh, right away after I'm done painting. So those are the kind of different split cups that I've used and like uh, different sizes for different size paintings. Um, we got the little one and then my favorite, like kind of right in the middle size. So I'll put these aside for now. And again, you could find those on my uh, Amazon page. Let me put the link down in the uh, comments. You can go check it out if you wanted to. Um, where did it go? Um, here we go. I'll throw it up in the comments. So you should be seeing it. Um, Hey, Christian, nice to see you again. And Jan is in the house. Hey, Jan. And uh, hey, Dawn. So I'm just checking to see if there's any questions. Let me put this down. Um, so anyway, so why are we going to be doing a, uh, a split cup? Well, the reason I like a split cup, it's, again, very similar to a like a double cup ring pour is what I call it, or the kiss pour, which is what Olga calls it. Um, and uh, uh, like the painting right behind me, this one, the uh, it's a blue one and kind of a pinkish coppery one. That is a, a double cup ring pour or a kiss pour. The split cup will look fairly similar. You get kind of the same uh, look to a split cup as you do with the, the kiss pour. It's just a little easier to do with the split cup um, because you only have one cup to deal with. You have colors on both sides. And um, with the with the double cup pour, you really have to hold both cups. It takes a little bit of uh, practice, a little bit of dexterity uh, to kind of get those cups poured at the same time. With the split cup, it's a whole lot easier. So I like to, when I do a split cup, have a lot of contrast, either um, like really darks on one side and lighter colors on the other side, or you could have color contrast, like let's say uh, all purples on one side, all um, yellows on the other side. That would be a lot of blending maybe, but that could look cool. So you can, but you can kind of keep the colors separated easier because of the divider in your cup. So there's not as much mixing when the um, paint hits the canvas or the panel. So, so you can really kind of keep things separated. Like the one behind me, um, those are very two distinct um, separate like quadrants of the canvas. Um, this one worked out really nice. I really love this one. So I have this blue, this beautiful blue section, and then this uh, really nice kind of pinkish coppery section. So you can keep your colors um, separated easier. And so if you're working with complementary colors a lot or colors that make a mud a lot, uh, the split cup technique might be a great one to try uh, to try to keep those colors uh, separated and from blending a whole lot. So uh, there's my cup. That's what we're going to use. I've got my, I've got a panel here, my, one of my cradled um, panels. This is a 14 by 18 panel, uh, which is a fun size to work on. And uh, let me set that here. I got three cameras going, so 
I'll maybe flip a couple different um, views when I get started painting. And let's go over the colors I'm gonna use. It's a very simple uh, color palette. It's kind of similar to the one behind me a little bit, but I'm gonna have in one side of my cup, I'm gonna have just gold and just copper. So those two, uh, maybe multiple layers of these two colors. And in the other side of my cup, I'm going to have uh, iridescent graphite, which and mixed with a little bit of black to get it a little darker. And I'm going to have Payne's gray mixed with um, a little bit of metallic leaf green. So it's a very dark kind of uh, em emerald green color. Um, so I'll show you. Here's my here's my gold. Let me take my covers off. I got my gold and my copper right here. And this one might be hard to see uh, on this camera, but it's a very dark, uh, kind of a very dark emeraldy green. And uh, so that's, you know, green is a complement of red and copper is, is kind of a reddish color. So the green and red are kind of complements together. And then my dark, uh, like it's basically black, but it's like a metallic black that I'm working with is right here, the... Uh, um, iridescent copper and a little bit of black. So it's not as, you know, black, black is, you know, just straight black. It's a little bit of, it's got like a super dark metallic gray. So um, those are my four colors. So one side of my cup is going to be all darks, very dark. And the other side uh, are not like, you know, whites, but more mid values. So the gold is the lightest color in our color scheme here. Um, the copper is kind of right in the middle, is like a middle value. So, so this is going to be a more of a, like a middle value uh, painting. It's not going to have massive contrast because I don't have, you know, white in there or something like that. So it's kind of a more of a mid to dark value painting. So we'll see what happens. Um, I haven't actually tried this color scheme before, so it's always great to try new stuff. So I'm going to just move my paints out of here. Um, I got, I'm running out of room. Let me throw them up here really quick. Um, I've got so much junk going on. I have lots of um, cups of paint. I've been doing lots of experiments lately, so it's a mess. The studio gets messy quickly. So, all right. So let's uh, let me see if I have any uh, questions before we get going into the demo. And. Um, Let's see, Jan said, oh, you could use a bottle brush. That's a great idea, Jan. Um, a bottle brush to clean out your uh, split cup. That Absolutely, that's a fantastic idea. Uh, yes, uh, Zena likes it, so awesome. This is, um, it's gonna be a fun, it's gonna be a fun demo. This is a fun technique, I like this one. Hey, Tammy, and uh, uh, yeah, um, Novala uses a like a brush, like a straw brush to clean. That's that would work great. And uh, cool, JC ordered her split cup. That's awesome. I'm glad you found that um, that useful. So again, all, most of the cups I showed you, I have different sizes in my Amazon uh, page, so you can check them out and see if uh, you want to try any of those. So. Nuvala likes the um, color scheme. Yeah, it was kind of like a, I was inspired kind of today by autumn. Um, I had to go to, in San Diego, there's a, a community called, um, oh my gosh, it's, I'm gonna totally blank on it. It's by a place called Old Town, which is a like a very historic tourist attraction place. Um, and uh, there are all these old craftsman houses in, around in this neighborhood. Um, and they're very kind of traditional and they're very fun. They're perfect for like Halloween and Christmas time. Um, I love going there because the houses and architecture are beautiful. Mission Hills, that's the name of it. So I was a little bit inspired today by like autumn fall colors. We don't get enough of those in San Diego. So, but uh, let's see. Uh, any other questions? Um, hey, Tammy, thank you so much. You're awesome. She gave me a super sticker on uh, YouTube. Thank you so much, Tammy. That is very sweet of you. I really appreciate that. Um, JC ordered three sizes. Wow, that's awesome. Well, I hope you like this technique and I hope this is a good painting and not a dud. So <laughs> we'll find out. Um, hey, Deborah. 
So I'm just seeing if there are any other questions. And I don't see any right now. So let's get into um, mixing up some paints or, or layering our cup, and we'll do a demo. So I'm going to flip the uh, camera over to, uh, maybe I'll try this one out. So I have my side camera going. So maybe I'll put it this way. So you can kind of see uh, how I'm layering my cup. Um, this is like a dark uh, charcoal-y colored, so it's not like perfect, but I'll do my best there. Um, all right, so let me get rid of this banner thingy so you have a better view. Good. So I've got my, um, I'll, I'll put my lighter colors in first, and then I'll put my darker colors in the other side. So with, as with most ring pours, um, or straight pours, the first color you start with is usually going to be the last color to come out of your cup and be kind of in the center. So I think I'm going to start with the gold. I, to get the maximum amount of contrast, I'll start with um, the lightest paint value I have, which is gold. So a little bit of gold, and then I'll put in a little bit of the copper. And when you're pouring from so high up here, kind of down the cup, you can get some more, a little bit more blending um, with your paints, which is fine. Um, you won't get as, as clean of layers as you would with like maybe a shorter cup, but that's fine. I actually don't mind that kind of blended a little bit. Um, I call that a high pour when you dump your paints in from a high, um, from really high up and it, the paints blend together a little bit more, which can create some interesting looks. So I've got two layers of each color. I'll put some more gold in there and then maybe another layer of copper. That looks good. Now, when I'm using like a split cup like this, it's kind of, they're, they're, I'm not filling this up all the way. I'm going to stop right about here, actually. I'm going to put a little more gold in. Um, I have to adjust because this is too much paint. The whole cup is too much paint for this size canvas. So I'm using uh, less paint than the cup would allow. But because they're, the, the paint has to travel out of the cup and some of the paint will be left in the cup, I usually add a little bit more paint than what my um, cheat sheet would say. So maybe like a half ounce to an ounce more just to allow for paint being left over in like a big cup like this. So I hope if that makes sense, I hope. So I've got my one side. Now I'm gonna flip it over here and fill up the other side. I think I'll start with the green, like that emerald green color. And here's the Payne's gray, or uh, I'm sorry, the uh, iridescent copper slash black. Here is the Payne's gray green color. Uh oh, I think I got a little green in my other, I got a little green in the other side. Oh well, that's okay. So what did I put in? Okay, back to the iridescent copper. You have to, have, have to be careful pouring into the cup so you don't pour the wrong color into the other side of the cup, which I did. So, but I'm not too worried about it. All right, there we go. And then maybe one more of the, the iridescent copper and then a little bit more black or uh, green, I mean, a little more green. There we go. So I have pretty much equal amounts. It's probably difficult to see that in the, uh, in the camera, but they're pretty even. So they're pretty even. So I'm gonna move my cup aside for the moment. And I'll flip the uh, camera up here, maybe. And so I'm going to throw on a base coat quickly. I mixed up some black paint. Um, whenever I do like a mid-value to darker value um, painting, I don't want to use white as my base coat. Um, just because sometimes if there are air bubbles in your paint, especially your like if there are air bubbles in your white base coat and they pop, they can show through. And so you have these little white specks 
uh, in your painting, which you know is mostly going to be dark colors and mid-value colors. So I definitely don't want that. So I'm going to just use some black uh, for the base coat. And I'll spread this out quickly, as quick as I can. So and it might be a little scrapey sounding. That's my panel. So and and again, I'm not I'm not uh, spreading this super super. I'm not too concerned with having a super even uh, base coat, as long as it's kind of covering the uh, panel. That's pretty much good enough for me. It will have some little, you know. Um, it's not going to be like I tilted the paint off is kind of what I'm saying. So don't worry if it's not perfectly smooth. Um, I never really worry about that too much. Okay. So that's pretty good. I'm not too worried about the sides right now. Um, the sides usually get covered. Uh, but if you're working on a gallery, um, profile canvas or panel like this one. Um, sometimes the paint does tend to want to stop on the sides. Um, it, sometimes it doesn't want to roll all the way over the sides. So in that instance, you could take your, um, you know, I have, I would definitely recommend gloves for this, but you could just take some paint on your hand and just run a little bit of paint on the side of your canvas just to get it a little bit, um, like slippery with paint, a little bit wet with paint. Then any paint that rolls over the sides, uh, it, it, it's easier for the paint to travel all the way down instead of uh, traveling down like the bare, the bare canvas that doesn't have any paint on it. So it can be beneficial to just uh, run your hand along the sides a little and get a little paint on there. Okay, that's pretty good. We're ready to go. I'm gonna just wipe my hands really quick. So I'm thinking because the top camera is gonna obstruct most of the view of the, uh, when I'm pouring the paint, maybe I'll switch back to the side view. Let me try that and then I wanna mark, I probably can't see my, and that's the center. Yeah, I think you'll be able to see that. Okay, let me move this just, uh oh, getting stuck. I'm gonna move this down just a hair. There we go. So I'm gonna be pouring right in the center of the panel, which is right here. All right, so let's give it a shot. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna pour this way. So I'm going to pour in the center, and we'll see what happens. And as I as I pour, I might um, turn my the cup a little bit. We'll see what happens. But here we go. So you want the paint to kind of come out. See if I can get down here. Come out. Oop, it didn't quite go together. But now we're working together. It's coming out at the same time. And you can, you can vary the height of your cup. And I'm going to slowly maybe turn the cup. And then maybe even turn it back a little bit. And then when you get to the end of your cup, this can be the trickiest part. is I like to tilt the cup back and then stop the drips so we don't get a big drip in our you know beautiful paint puddle. And I really like that. That looks really nice. Let me flip it back to the overhead view. So hopefully that will uh, clear up in a second. Let me move it back over here. Uh, 
so I really like the just the shape we have of our paint. Our two sides are very distinct, which I like. We got some interesting things happening in the center, which I kind of like. So now we'll tilt it out and see what we got. Let me flip back here to the comments. Any, I'm going to just check the comments quick and see if there are any uh, questions. Yeah, I don't see any questions. Hey, Nina, thanks for joining us. My friend Nina is uh, watching. Hey, Donna. And uh, all right, no questions. So I'm going to, let's start uh, tilting our paint. Let me move my black out of the way. Okay, so tilting, again, I like to, the first stage is to stretch out the paint puddle. And so I'm going to kind of slowly move the paint around the canvas without taking it off the edge if I can, if I can help it. And I like to do that in kind of a circular, a circular motion. And this just helps kind of spread the paint out a little bit, a uh, little more even distribution over the whole uh, canvas or surface. And then it makes the kind of tilting off the edges a, a little bit easier. Now, probably the hardest part is deciding which corner we want to tilt off of first. Um, I've got a lot of paint down here on this side. I think I might want to tilt this dark corner first and see what happens there. I'm going to turn just to get a better angle on tilting. I like to always tilt my corners towards me so I can kind of control them better with my with my hand. And uh, you can see what's happening a little bit more as opposed to tilting when they're away from you all the way. You can't really see what's happening. So slowly the paint's coming towards me. This might be hard because it's dark. It's over the edge. So now I'm going to tilt backwards. And you can kind of, um, you know, be gentle when you're tilting backwards. I, I'm pretty gentle tilting in all directions. I don't really, unless I really want to make something really dynamic happen, I generally don't tilt really crazy and fast. I kind of take it a little bit slower. So now let's, we got our first corner done. Let's maybe go over to... Where do I want to go? I don't know. I kind of like this line. I think that's kind of cool. Maybe I'll leave that for now. Why don't we go and tilt this one off, the opposite corner. And there's no right or wrong on tilting like the corners. You can kind of decide and do whatever you want. So I'll, this will take a little bit longer because I'm moving the paint all the way across, diagonally across the canvas. So but I'm still going nice and kind of slowly. Okay, so there it's over the uh, corner. Now I'm tilting kind of back. And I kind of changed the angle a little bit to kind of move the, the paint in different directions. So I like that. I think this is looking very cool. Um, I think I'll go off of this corner next, right down here. So I'm just bringing the paint down slowly. I don't want to lose uh, these edges. So this one, i going to be a little careful. So I tilt it over. Now I'm going to tilt, tilt back. I kind of like that dark uh, corner. So now what do we have? So that's very interesting. I like that. Um, hmm. Now I have to decide, I have to make a decision. Let me turn it over here. And whether or not to um, leave this interesting uh, line in like a negative, like a negative space shape. And uh, Peggy says, leave it. I tend to agree, Peggy. I kind of like it. Um, 
Hmm. Well, I'll leave it alone for now, but we do have these, we have some black showing. So one thing we could do, um, we don't have really, I could just take my iridescent graphite and I can kind of drizzle some paint over the kind of those bare spots of the panel that we're showing. And it's not exactly black, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm kind of just drizzling a little bit of uh, paint on there. All right, that's that's fine. So I can also tilt. I think I'll tilt. I'll shoot. Let's see. I'm going to turn it again. So I, I, mean, I really like what we've got. Um, Navala wants me to leave it too. And I think Cheryl agrees. So I quite like it, actually. I kind of like the negative space. I really like the line, that interesting line we have. Um, and it kind of is you know, similar to this corner down here. Um, but that doesn't bother me too much because this is more of a gradated uh, colors, you know, the, the gold and the copper are kind of blending into that corner. Uh, this was a more sharp line, which I really like. So maybe I'll just leave it, I think. Um, now, you know, this is, we've covered all the corner, all the corners, we've tilted it. And the third, the final stage is, uh, you know, assessing our painting and seeing if there's anything else we want to um, do to it. So, um, at this stage, there's not a whole lot that I think I want to do. I think it looks just great like this. The only thing I might want to do is move. Let me, let me wipe my hands off quick because I have to point at something. And I don't want to drip all over the canvas. So... Okay, so, you know, th this is composition. I'm talking about compositional things right now. And some of the principles I like as far as composition goes, which you cannot always uh, achieve with paint pouring because it's just so random. Um, and so much is like out of your control. But I always keep these in the back of my mind and they always seem to help me. So I like all my corners to be different in some way. So you know, we've got a really nice gold and copper corner up here. Down here, we've got a dark corner, but this is kind of like a blending. The gold is kind of blending into that darkness, which I like. And then up here, we've got another dark corner, but that's, uh, we've got this defined sharp edge. So those are all pretty different. Then this big dark shape leading into the composition, which I like. Um, so right off the bat, you know, the corners I think are fine. Now we have to look at the center of interest, which is right here. Um, that's pretty obvious because it's it's kind of like a, like a storm or, a, you know, the ring pores usually have the center of interest. And I never want that center of interest to be in the center of the painting. Um, that's like a bullseye and it's, it's, you know, rule number one, don't have your center of interest in the center of your painting because it's boring. Um, so we don't have it in the center. We have it off center. Uh, it's a little bit to the left side, which doesn't bother me at all. I was thinking of tilting this off, a little bit of gold off this corner, but then that would bring the center of interest closer to the center. So we don't wanna do that. So I think I'm just gonna leave it. I think we have a completed painting um, and I really like it. So at this stage, you can check your edges um, like I'll have to maybe go back and touch up a little bit of edges. Um, you know, this is kind of the final stage of the painting. You can, you can take your uh, palette knife and scrape off the bottom if you want to. I kind of like to do that just so I don't have lots of drips coming off the bottom of my panels. I can, and then turn it and do the same on the other two sides. So... Let's see here. Let's scrape those. And I think that's pretty much it. Some of these edges right here, uh, if you can see my, 
my finger. This edge is not totally covered, um, but that's fine. I can always go back afterwards and paint that black. It's pretty much black anyway. Um, and we have a couple, I drizzled some of the uh, iridescent graphite up here. I think I'm going to drizzle a little bit of the green up there too, just so that I have those colors in the in this corner. And see if I like that. And do I like it? I mean, it's very subtle. You might, you probably are not going to see that on the uh, camera. And that also differentiates this corner from the other corners, which I think is kind of interesting. So, okay, that's good enough. So I think um, that's it for this demo. <laughs> that's, sometimes they go very fast. Um, this is a pretty fast one. So I, I'm pretty happy with that painting. It turned out well. It's got, uh, it's very bold and dramatic. It's got, you know, really darks, uh, like dark darks, and then the beautiful gold and copper, um, which are a really nice contrast. And I know you can't see this, but right in here on this corner and in our big black area here, we have this beautiful, blending of the iridescent copper or iridescent graphite and that dark like emerald gold. So um, that should be very interesting to see how that looks when it's dry. And of course I'll photograph this when it's dry and I'll post it. So you can kind of see the, uh, the dry results of our painting. So, all right. Well, I think, uh, let me go back here um, to my other camera. And uh, that was pretty quick, I think. Um, but uh, sometimes they go really fast. Uh, and I really like it. There's not a lot of messing around with it, which is usually the best. When you can kind of pour it, tilt it, it all looks pretty nice. You like pretty much got the intention of what you wanted to achieve, and you're done. I mean, that's kind of the uh, best case scenario. It doesn't always work like that unfortunately, but it's really nice when they do work out and then you can move on to another painting. So, but uh, I really like this one. Um, we got some very interesting, delicate rings in there and um, a couple little cells, but not too many cells. But uh, I think that's really a really fun, cool painting, kind of a, a fall, um, kind of dramatic autumn painting. So, but if you have any questions about uh, this process or uh, the colors I use, I know some of you came in late. I'll maybe go over the colors again so you can kind of see what I used. Um, you can throw them in the uh, comments. Just check the uh, questions here. And uh, mm -hmm. let's see. Uh, I don't see any questions. Lots of comments, interesting comments, nice comments. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, let me see if there are any. See, I'll look earlier here while I was while I was uh, painting. Um, I'm glad I left it too. Yeah, I'm glad I left that uh, kind of negative shape. Okay. No other questions, but um, Novala likes the painting. Thank you so much, Novala. Um, uh, let's see, I'll make over the, the colors I used again, just because if you weren't here originally, I'll go over them really quick. So I had a copper here. This was, um, this is probably my favorite copper. It's the Master's Touch. Um, it's not called copper, but it's called uh, uh, brown red, which is their copper. It's a really warm, like wonderful copper. I just, I really like that. I use, I had gold and this is kind of a, this is a mixture of Liquitex gold and um, Artist Loft gold. I just had like little bits of tubes left. So I combined them into, you know, this gold. 
And then I had in the, my dark, my dark number one was iridescent graphite um, from Liquitex. It's one of my favorite colors. I, I really like this color. It's a metallic, like a metallic black or metallic, really dark gray. And then I added a little bit of black to, to that. And then my last um, color, which was the dark green, that was kind of a custom mix. That was a Payne's gray from Liquitex and uh, the metallic leaf green from uh, Artist Loft, which is one of my favorite greens. It's a beautiful metallic green. Um, so I made, I mixed that together. It was probably about, uh, I don't think it's 50, 50, um, probably a little more of the Payne's gray in there. So it's like a dark, it's a really dark kind of bluish emeraldy green. It's a very pretty green. I really like that color. Um, and it kind of, it just blends into the, the graphite. I really like, uh, in my, in my personal opinion, I really love to have, um, various, uh, lights and various darks. So instead of using just black, like if you were doing like a negative space pour or something and you're just using black on one side, I love to incorporate multiple blacks and, uh, like a metallic black and maybe just a regular black. And, and then like this one is a, like a greenish blue black. Um, it just adds so much interest to the painting. Um, and when it just dry, it just doesn't look like a black, you know, like a black hunk of canvas. It's got tons of interesting details. Um, but so I love to do that, especially, and then also with whites, if I was doing a, like a white negative space pour or something, I, I like to have multiple white colors. So I maybe have white and a metallic white uh, make it like a pearlescent white and then maybe an off-white like more of a, a like white mixed with a titanium or not a titanium like a buff titanium um, so you have these uh, very interesting very subtle shifts in your in your lights and your darks to me that just makes paintings much more uh, dynamic and interesting and much more um, there's more to look at for the viewer especially you know you you get hit by the immediate um, you know, contrast of the colors. Like this one we just did, wow, it's black and it's gold or black and copper. Um, and it's very interesting. And you see the big dynamic shapes. But then when you look closer, you see, oh my gosh, there's all these rings, these delicate little shifts in in color and, and value. So to me, that really, I really love um, trying to incorporate that in my paintings. So, but th those were the colors that we used. Um, very simple it's a very simple color palette, just two darks and two um, kind of mid-value colors. And again, I have um, a variety of these split cups that I found on Amazon. They're not, they're like a, a two-sided um, workout shake um, cup, like, or tumbler, or whatever you would call that. And this was like a 14 ounce one. And then I had uh, this is a 30 ounce one, like this big one. It's called Hydra Cup for a great big painting. And then I have this, this is probably my least favorite one, but um, it was the first one I got. It's like a, called a him and hers uh, tumbler thing. And it's got the divider in the center. Um, so, but these work really good. And I like just the two sides to my split cups, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, it just creates more like dynamic contrast. And that's what I'm after when I'm doing the uh, uh, split cup or the uh, kiss pour or double cup ring pour. So let's see, does anyone else have any questions? I will check. And uh, Donna likes these split cup. She says she has two. That's awesome, Donna. Um, Navala asks, does anyone make metallic brown or metallic umber? Uh, that's a good question. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of a dark, like metallic brown color. Um, I don't think Liquitex makes it up. Oh, I think Amsterdam might. Just hold on one second. I'm going to unpin my um, mic here. I'm going to grab something really fast. I'll be right back. Okay. So I have these uh, color charts that I printed out. Oop, let me put my mic back on. Um, 
so I have, um, this is a, like an Amsterdam standard series color chart. And uh, I like to print them out. And then, and I also have one for Liquitex, the Liquitex Basics. Um, and you can print them out and you can see easily, like, what do they have? So I'm going to just check and see if they have a, a metallic, um, a metallic brown. I know Liquitex does not, um, but Amsterdam might. And um, Golden probably ha does have one, I would, I would think. But uh, I'm just checking here. So Amsterdam has a pewter, a pewter color, which is a beautiful color. I love that color. They have graphite, pearl white, pearl yellow, which is kind of a, a greenish, a, a metallic green yellow, probably similar to um, the metallic leaf green, but I don't see a metallic uh, burnt umber. But you could all you could always mix one up, and uh, I would probably start with um, if I was to mix up like a dark brown umber. You could start with brown, like a burnt like a burnt umber, and then you could add um, copper is going to add a lot of red, or you could start. Let's see, what would I do if I wanted to mix a metallic, like a dark metallic brown? Like raw umber is, I like this color a lot. Not necessarily this brand, but um, it's, which is fine. But just in general, raw umber is a really uh, rich, dark brown. Um, and you could, add, you could add some copper to it and it would give it more red, like a raw sienna or a burnt sienna. Um, but it would still be a dark reddish brown. And uh, what else could you add? Um, you could also try adding, this is probably what I would try first. If you try adding like a metallic bronze, um, this happens to be the Artist Loft, which is a little bit of a, a greenish bronze. There are, every bronze has kind of its own um, color to it. They're all a little bit different. Um, this one might not be the perfect one, but if you mix kind of a metallic bronze, bronze is nice because it's dark already. Um, and so you don't have to, you know, whatever you mix into the brown, it's going to stay dark. So these two might be a good um, mix, a good combination to come up with a nice metallic brown. The other thing you can do is you could always add like an iridescent medium to your um, just regular brown. So and uh, you could add some Floetrol and then iridescent medium and then your whatever color you want. That'll make anything metallic. So um, those are a couple different options for you. Um, I don't, I can't think of like a dark metallic brown off the top of my head though. Um, and oh, JC, um, JC says uh, Deco Art makes a metallic brown and that absolutely is true. It's one of my favorite colors actually. I just, just thought of it. Um, it's like a rich espresso, I think they call it. It's like a metallic, it's a dark metallic, uh, rich espresso color. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. That's a great uh, recommendation, JC. I totally blanked on deco art, um, but uh, that's awesome. And oh, Donna, Donna also mentioned um, you can add iridescent medium, yeah, which will make pretty much any color metallic. So great suggestions, everyone. So thanks, Donna and JC. And yeah, I should have thought of that. That that's a I use that a lot. That rich espresso, I think it's called. Beautiful, beautiful dark brown color. So let's see. Anyone else? Any other questions? I don't see anything at the time. Um, so anyway, that was a fun demo. It was a pretty quick one, but it turned out really nice. I'll i uh, give you another peek at it here. Uh, so here's the top view camera. So I really like it. Um, got some very interesting things in it. I'll take a picture of the uh, dry painting and uh, I'll post it in the group, uh, the Acrylic Pouring Club group. You can check it out there. So, and, uh, so thanks for joining me. This is a, a, f a fun, fast demo. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of a new color scheme for me. 
And I kind of like that one. And thanks so much, Tammy, again, for the super sticker. You're awesome. That was uh, very, very nice of you. I appreciate that a whole lot. So, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, everyone. I hope you have some fun plans coming up. I'm going to be doing some painting, watching a little football, and uh, we'll see what else happens. So until next time, I will uh, talk to you soon. Uh, do some painting, and uh, if you try out the split cup, post your painting in the, um, the group, the Acrylic Porn Club group. I'd love to see what you come up with. And if you have any other questions about this technique uh, or the paints I use or anything, just uh, throw them in there as well, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. So thanks again, everyone. I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.